First published in 1870 and evolving through seven editions in William Robinson's lifetime, The Wild Garden promoted an authentically naturalistic and genuinely low-maintenance approach based upon Robinson's considerable experience as a gardener, a botanist, and a direct observer of diverse habitats. The book was groundbreaking and hugely influential in its day, and is stunningly relevant to 21st century gardeners and landscape stewards seeking to combine aesthetic design with dynamic biological diversity and sustainable management practices. The aim of the expanded edition is to introduce the wild garden to a new generation of readers and to expand upon William Robinson's wild garden concept in a modern ecological context. The Wild Garden opens with the following quote from Sidney Smith, an Oxford-educated clergyman and moral philosopher celebrated for his wit and wisdom. I went to stay at a very grand and beautiful place in the country, where the grounds are said to be laid out with consummate taste. For the first three or four days I was enchanted. It seemed so much better than nature that I began to wish the earth had been laid out according to the latest principles of improvement. In three days' time I was tired to death. A thistle, a heap of dead bushes, Anything that wore the appearance of accident and want of intention was quite a relief. I used to escape from the made grounds and walk upon the adjacent goose common, where the cart ruts, gravel pits, bumps, coarse ungentlemanlike grass, and all the varieties produced by neglect were a thousand times more gratifying. It's easy to see why Smith's words resonated with Robinson. They celebrate variety and autonomy, the core values of the wild gardening concept. Both Smith and Robinson were railing against the monotony of order, and both recognized the diversity and serendipity that often result from a lessening of control. The idea of wild gardening is more vital today than ever before. Robinson's historic concept is proving to be eminently modern, providing inspiration for all of us who are interested in combining fine garden design and enlightened environmental stewardship in the creation of livable landscapes and communities. The dynamic nature of wild gardens is a sensible antidote to the increasing density and diminishing biological diversity of many contemporary landscapes. Wild gardens embrace change and encourage spontaneity, while holding fast to the underlying values that make landscapes reliably practical and truly sustainable. Wild gardens are full of real intrigue because they're both walkable and watchable. Wild gardening can be adopted literally anywhere in the world, in landscapes large or small, public or private. Stylish but not limited to any one style, wild gardening is suited to all sorts of habitats, including woodlands, meadows, prairies, seashores, deserts, and urban centers. As Robinson suggested, with a little imagination, wild gardening can be fit into appropriate niches, even in the most formal of gardens. What is wild? On the subject of wildness, William Robinson was clearly a modernist. There has been some misunderstanding as to the term wild garden, he wrote in 1881. It has nothing to do with the old idea of the wilderness. More than a century later, we still often confuse wildness and wilderness, and this confusion clouds our vision of what is truly ecological and what is genuinely sustainable. In recent centuries, wilderness has evolved from a fearsome, dangerously wild place to be conquered into a mythic realm where the last best things reside. There's no doubting the romantic appeal of wilderness if it evokes a pristine landscape untouched by humans, where plant and animal communities exist in beautiful balance. But if this is the ideal, then we're forced to either exclude ourselves or judge everything we do to be diminishing. Though wilderness is only a distant memory in modern European consciousness, in North America, where remnant wilderness even now seems within reach, popular ecological philosophy often focuses on loss. Henry David Thoreau's take on his increasingly populated 19th century New England environment is typical of this perspective. In his journal, he poses his lament as a question. Is it not a maimed and imperfect nature that I am conversant with? Perhaps closer to revolution than evolution, the most recent trend in ecological thinking fully integrates the human community in the environmental model. The welcome news is that this finally outlines an ethical approach that encourages us to take responsibility for our influence. We have the choice and the opportunity to contribute to the greater good. Environmental historian William Cronin's 1995 essay, The Trouble with Wilderness, or Getting Back to the Wrong Nature, is an insightful, articulate discussion of wilderness and wildness. Cronin was among the first to liken the landscape to the palimpsest, 
the surface that has been written on repeatedly, each time the previous writing having been imperfectly erased and therefore remaining partly readable. He suggests the old idea of wilderness presents, quote, the false hope of an escape from responsibility, the illusion that we can somehow wipe clean the slate of our past to return to the tabula rasa that supposedly existed before we began to leave our marks on the world. Cronin believes learning to honor the wild, learning to remember and acknowledge the autonomy of the other, will be key to envisioning an honorable human place in the global ecology. He says wildness, as opposed to wilderness, can be found anywhere, in seemingly tame fields and woodlots, in the cracks of a Manhattan sidewalk. The notion that wildness is a renewable resource is encouraging. Somehow William Robinson understood this implicitly when he envisioned free wild things having a place in our gardens. Robinson's advocacy for a bit more ease and a little less control recognizes that freedom and wildness are inseparable. The wild garden doesn't abandon design, but it does imply that design devoted to complete control is unsustainable. Robinson understood the conservation of resources that results from self-perpetuating, ecologically viable plant populations in the garden. The Robinsonian wild garden is more than naturalistic. Its patterns result from the dynamic interaction of the multiplicity of things and living processes that we call nature. Just as we cherish our own independence, celebrating autonomy in the life of our gardens is a responsible step towards integrating our home habitats in an enlightened environmental model. We can begin simply by allowing a seed to germinate.